Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and today we're taking a look one more time at the top 10 worst characters in the game. Now, I wanted to redo this vis video and this list for a few reasons. For one, some of the characters that I mentioned in that top 10 list, you know, Electra, Black Panther, uh, Singularity, Sif, and Hulk have all gotten either tier two passives that make them considerably better or reworks or uniforms and all of those things together have actually elevated half or more than half of that video's list way above and way beyond the tier or category of worst or potentially worst. So that was that was the first incentive for why I wanted to do that. The second incentive was just to give you guys another look and another you know opinion uh, at the characters who I think are the most at risk and what I mean by that is if you come into the game new and if you choose to invest in these characters despite the fact that with their tier 2 passives they can get some things done you will struggle mightily to do those things and you will probably have a worse go at the game initially if you only invest in these specific characters now I'm not trying to say that any of these characters should be avoided at all costs but I have personally avoided a lot of them and I also wanted to just make it a warning to you guys, you know, if this is your favorite character, you're going to have an uphill battle to make them really shine in the game. And of course, I also do this, guys, to try and shed some light on some of these characters to hopefully have some people see it that might, you know, make some positive changes for these characters. Also, keep in mind that some of the characters on the previous list that don't make it onto this list were just not chosen because I don't want to repeat myself. So characters like Red Skull, I just don't want to say him again, so I chose a new character that kind of fits the same mold as him, but I tried to come up with new characters who I felt kind of fit that bill. And I think there's more than 10, arguably, but you know, we're just trying to narrow it down. So at number 10, guys, similar to Red Skull in that he struggles to do a lot with his summons is Maximus. Now, a lot of people, myself included, were very happy when we saw that we were getting a character with so many summons. He looks awesome. His summons do look very cool and they're very unique and there's different kinds of them. But ultimately, even with his tier two passive, Maximus falls way short. He doesn't have enough health or defense to really stay alive long enough for his uh, minions to do much. And because he has such low health and defense, his minions don't even stay alive that long. And that's that's probably the primary problem with him. You know, I would, I would want Maximus to be tanky like someone along the lines of Kingpin as a combat character. But even as a blast character with his uniform... Kingpin's minions are super tanky. They take so many hits, and Kingpin himself can take hits, but Maximus really can't. Even with his passive, even with his tier 2, he's a bit of a wet towel. And that's really disappointing to me, given that he's a new character, and given that he had so much promise for him with all of these different summons. So I do think that he does make this list for that reason, and I wish he were a little bit better. Also keep in mind guys, I do want to talk about characters in terms of how bad they are, in terms of how difficult or easy it is to get their bio. So Maximus, it's pretty easy to farm for him, special missions. On the other, on the other hand, we have a character like Blade who is also pretty easy to farm. You can get 30 bios per day, but Blade is another character who despite having a lot of different things to use, kind of falls short. Even with a uniform, even with a very powerful 5 skill or 6 star skill, even with a tier 2 passive which looks good by its numbers but really doesn't do much for the character, Blade falls short. He's basically only useful in Shadowland situations and you really have to build him up to reach that level. He's not going to get you very far just by his own kit. He's got lots of long animations, he's got no iframes, he's got no ways of protecting himself. And so he just kind of dies. And his his leadership, as curious as it is, as unique as it is, really doesn't pull any weight for the character, really doesn't heal enough to be, you know, considered a leadership at all. Another character that I wish were better and that they uh, hopefully improve one day. Another character who had a lot of promise and who falls low on this list despite the fact that she has a very powerful leadership is Hela. Now, you guys have to take into consideration, I'm putting Hela on this list at number 8 with her leadership being taken into consideration. 45% energy damage is fantastic. Even with that, it is extremely difficult to get Hela to do much of anything successfully in part because of how squishy she is, she is, how low her defenses are, they're even lower than Maximus's, how low her HP is, 
It's really, really difficult, even at tier two, which doesn't really give her all that much. 25% guaranteed dodge rate just doesn't really cut it anymore. Her summons really just don't do anything despite having 70% of her stats. Again, she's got such low stats, especially for a universal character, that even if they have 100% of her stats, they're really not putting up much of a fight. She has lots of partial iframes, which make her get hit a lot, and she's really only here for her leadership. She's kind of in the same zone as someone like Gorgon, except Gorgon has some iframes, he's got some debuffs, he has ways of making up for it. Unfortunately, Hela doesn't. Her damage output with her own leadership isn't even that good, and so she falls on this list. Another character who I had to repeat from the last list, guys, because it's just pretty sad where she is right now in the game, is Sin. And I focus on Sin because she does have a lot going for her. She does have iframes, she does have a way of boosting her own uh, damage and all speed with Rapid Handgun, and she does have a very strong 4-star passive Fatal Reversal. With a 20 second cooldown, which is not so bad, she removes all debuffs for 10 seconds, that means that she cannot be refrozen okay, by Doctor Strange for 10 whole seconds, which is a long time. And it gives her a massive 30% all attack, 35% all crit rate, and 8% all speed. So with just these two, you can get her all speed capped with no help from your cards or ISO 8 or gear, uh, you know, whenever you get debuffed. So that right there is very powerful. Even with all of that, even with a pretty good leadership she falls short and she falls short for a couple of reasons her, her a lot of her attacks don't do enough damage on their own they have very long animations with lots of different strikes lots of different hits they're like seven eight nine ten hits and so because the damage is diced up so many times she gets interrupted she gets guard broken she gets stunned the enemy goes into an iframe and her damage just falls off a cliff on top of that her tier two passive is one of the worst passives in the game and for a character who brought who was brought out with Sharon Rogers, for a character who has a lot of promise, they really need to do more for her. She really does need a uniform to fix up some of these skills, to give her shorter animations, to give her more burst damage, and this character could really take off as a meta character. Number six on the list is Venom. And Venom, I will give a lot of flack here, despite the fact that some people will sing his praises, because Venom should be better. He's Spider-Man's basically arch nemesis. There's, you know, Venom Appreciation Month over at Marvel, and yet Net Marble didn't do anything for, you know, our beloved symbiote. Uh, I've talked already about why his tier two passive is kind of dumb. I'm not going to get into that too much. His leadership is bad, but the real big problem with Venom is that all of his skills make him stand still and do something there's no fluidity there's no movement there's no iframes there's just nothing interesting or nothing practical functional about his skills he's a pylon and for those reasons even in spite of the fact that he has a uniform which then you know can buff up his all attack and all defense you can get you know 20,000 25,000 uh, physical attack on venom even with that, he even struggles to clear basic world bosses. There's no way he's clearing, you know, uh, Black Dwarf without all of the best strikers. So it's really sad. And, you know, you can farm for him, but why would you, basically? Number five on this list is a character that I wish I could say was better because her counterpart is... But even with her recent tier 2 passive, Jessica Jones is not. And I also put her at number 5 on this list. I'm very hard on her because her bios are hard to get. You can only get her from bio selectors like Sin. And yet she's terrible. Compared to Luke Cage, she's even worse. She has one iframe, no healing like Luke Cage has on his 4 star passive. Her leadership doesn't get buffed the way that his does with his uniforms and gets the cooldown reduced. She has no uniform so you have no way of boosting up her attack and defense. Uh, on top of that, she does have high HP, but that's basically all you get. Her skills just don't really do all that much damage on their own, doesn't have much use for telepathic resistance at this point in the game, and I just feel like what they did for her with her tier 2 passive and her character rebalancing was just not enough. You know, I think there may be, they may be holding out for a uniform, I hope so, but she needs a lot of love, and you know, even people who really care about this character tier 2'd her and felt lackluster with the results. So, you know, she needs she needs to be put in her place. Number four on the list is a new character, but one that I've literally heard nothing about, and that to me speaks volumes about her usability, 
Hellcat. Okay, we have our female Batman guys or whatever you want to call her, uh, but she just doesn't do anything. She doesn't stand out at all in the speed class. Her damage is not particularly good. She's got some iframes, but that's basically where it ends. She's got a pathetic leadership. Her tier 2 passive is okay. 30% dodge rate is nice, but it enhances the effect of Wildcat. And here's where I'm really going to dig deep with my claws. Wildcat is one of the worst 4-star passives in the game. 5% chance when attacking. 5. That's 1 in 20 times, guys. It deals 30% bleed damage every 1 second for 5 seconds on a 20 second cooldown. This will proc in PvP situations once. And then they'll die or you'll die. This is so useless. This is Jessica Jones level useless this is worse than that this is original black panthers tier 2 passive useless if you guys remember what that did okay i don't know what netmarble was thinking but they they really can't release characters like this anymore no one in their right mind would develop hellcat unless they were an absolute fervent you know bedwetting fan of hers and even then you're gonna have a bad time man I just, I really don't understand how the, how this got through QA and they were like, yeah, you know what, this is good. People are going to like this character, especially in a speed class that's already overcrowded with this kind of crap. Didn't they learn their lesson from Electra? I guess not. The top three on this list, as you can see from the guys and girl you have looking back at you are mostly from the Guardians of the Galaxy. And then, of course, my number one biggest hater, Hulkling. Guys, I've already talked about Rocket Raccoon and I've already talked about Gamora and it's sad because they should be better. You know, Gamora as a speed character has no way of being survivable, of protecting herself. She moves around so much and yet she still gets crunched and punked and, you know, knocked away. She really needs a lot of love to be good at basically anything. She also suffers from this bleed you know, ridiculousness. Now it's it's 5% chance when attacking. Oh, it deals 40% bleed damage. Wow. But you know what? Her tier 2 passive doesn't increase skilled assassin's effect. These kinds of skills, these kinds of things really either need to be improved dramatically, especially the bleed, or they need to be replaced with something else. Netmarble can't keep putting this in the game and just letting these characters suffer. She basically doesn't have a 4-star passive, and that's really sad because other characters have amazing 4-star passives. In Rocket Raccoon's case, we already know what the deal is. He basically cannot take a hit despite having Groot, you know, box for him on his fifth skill. He doesn't do enough damage. All of his skills are clunky. They animate awkwardly. They're long. They're cumbersome. You need to kite the enemy into the way. It just doesn't suit the game and the way the game has gone. This character is a good character for a different game. He doesn't fit Marvel Future Fight's mold anymore, and he needs reshaping badly if you start with either rocket raccoon or gamora you're going to struggle mightily in this game even at tier 2 they struggle to clear world bosses forget about black dwarf forget about infinity thanos and then we have our boy here hulkling i mean he's half kree he's half hulk and yet this is how bad he is his only saving grace is shadowlands guys his tier 2 passive is on a 20 second cooldown okay he does get remove all debuff for five seconds and he does get immunity for two seconds it's just not enough he's got one iframe his skills don't deal very good damage i'm gonna hear people say in the comment section i use him to clear stage one of shadowlands i use tier one superior spider-man to clear stage one of shadowlands and i wanted to induce an aneurysm okay that's not a good look for the character if that's the best they can do. His four-star passive is trash. His leadership is trash. The character does nothing well at all. He's a mess. You know, he needs a uniform. He needs everything. He's the worst new Avenger by far. And he's arguably the worst character in the game. And the one that will give you the most frustration if you choose to build him up. And also, he's not really much to look at. So there's that. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think of the list. Let me know if there are characters that you think shouldn't have been on this list. If you think that I was a little bit too hard, a little bit too soft on some of the other characters. Keep in mind the things that I mentioned at the beginning to kind of, you know, fill out your perspective if you if you missed part of that and then you're going to jump on me about it. And of course, guys, if you like what you see, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Take care.